Here's your money briefing for Wednesday, June 21st. I'm J.R. Whalen for The Wall Street Journal. Many companies are taking steps to address increased frustration and low morale among workers. Wall Street Journal reporter Russell Adams joins us. So, Russell, what has caused employees to be unhappy at work? The main thing is that the pandemic took a toll on worker morale, both in service jobs like restaurant workers and hotel workers, and also among white collar employees who work in an office every day. I think in the former category, in the service jobs, they were woefully understaffed. And so workers were asked to do a lot more than they normally do, were asked to work longer hours and more stringent schedules. And that really weighed heavily. And then on the office worker side, because most of us went home for a while, the boundaries between our professional and personal lives got increasingly blurred, and people were asked to basically be on call at whatever job they do all the time. Okay, so let's look at some ways that companies are trying to improve employees' experiences. Something that frustrates many workers, whether they're in the office or working remotely, are additions to their daily calendar that slow down the workday. Oftentimes, the culprit is the dreaded meeting. How are companies addressing that? Another byproduct of the pandemic is that we got a lot more meetings on our calendars. By one measure, the amount of hours that the average worker spends in a meeting almost tripled during that period of time. And I think that as we got back to a normal schedule, we kind of held on to way too many of those meetings that were unnecessary now that a lot of us were back together in the office. And some companies have taken a hard look at this and really found that It really cuts into productivity and wastes a lot of time. One company that we've focused on is Shopify. They've taken a really hard look at meetings, and they found that they were able to delete 12,000 events, and that added up to 95,000 total hours saved. (laughs) That's a lot of time back in people's schedule. That's a lot of time, yes. Are these steps being taken solely to appease workers? No. In fact, a lot of companies are doing these things with an eye not just to improve the quality of life for workers at work, but also to boost productivity and efficiency. We're seeing broadly a renewed focus on efficiency, or as you know, Mark Zuckerberg called it, the year of efficiency. And I think a lot of executives have, have sort of taken that and run with it. You mentioned restaurants a moment ago, and those companies in particular have dealt with a severe labor shortage as they emerged from the pandemic. How have they handled that? That's been sort of a vicious cycle. They had a labor shortage that emanated from the pandemic, and then they asked more and more of the workers that did stay, and they became increasingly miserable and left. And so you had this cycle where restaurant workers became increasingly stretched and miserable. And so some of that labor shortage has eased recently, but it's still acute. And what we've seen is some restaurant operators have taken a hard look at how these workers spend their days. One in particular is Chili's, which did sort of a deep dive into how it does everything and the amount of time that workers spent on things that are really unnecessary. And at Chili's, it's really interesting. The the CEO found that there was this thing that workers in the restaurant had to do every day where they count and bag shrimp, which was totally unnecessary, and that by eliminating that task, it saved $6 million in labor costs. Another thing they did is that because of the, the worker shortage, they cut down on bussers, and that made the jobs of servers that much more difficult. And so they've added hours to bussers' schedules, which has eased the load on servers as well. And then they also streamlined the menu offerings. Chili's has long had a very expansive menu, which taxed the kitchen. And so they streamlined some of the items that were more labor-intensive or less popular. And customers don't always like that, but it's been well-received in the kitchens. And you might think that giving raises or financial incentives might be enough to appease workers, but in a lot of cases, it really isn't enough to keep workers happy. What have some companies done instead? We've seen that across several industries, is that companies have raised pay, you know, with inflation, but they have found that job satisfaction didn't really improve markedly when they took those steps, and they had to take a harder look at the nature of a lot of these jobs and what they could do to make them more sort of humane and livable. So one example we've seen with Uber, 
the CEO spent some time undercover as a driver to really look at what life was like for a driver and all of the sort of daily annoyances that they face and found that the job was full of those annoyances that, you know, he took a hard look at and tried to figure out what he could do to improve it. They seem kind of small, but the drivers traditionally had to accept a job before they knew what the destination was, which meant that they got stuck going to a place where they knew they couldn't find a pickup to take them back to where they were before. It was a real annoyance for them. And so he streamlined that process. In another industry, British Airways, the company outfitted crews with brand new outfits that are more weather resistant. It's a really difficult job. A lot of turnover is similar to the restaurant industry. You know, the weather is tough. The hours are long. It's uncomfortable. You're in the belly of a plane pulling out bags. And that airline says that workers are thrilled with the new outfits, which have made a big difference. Another company has introduced revamped break rooms for baggage handlers with TVs and lockers and other things that they said have gone a long way. At The operator of Frankfurt Airport now gives employees ice cream on the tarmac, which is a small thing. but That can I, make anybody's day better, right? Exactly. I think we should all have that. <laughs> so what else have companies done? One of the companies that we've taken a close look at, which is really interesting, is AT&T. They took a real close look at how workers spend their day, and they identified more than 160 tasks that they realized they could either streamline or eliminate and save a lot of time uh, from workers' schedules. So they looked at things like traditionally if an employee had a retirement or service anniversary party, whoever organized the party had to enter every attendee's name into the system for the expense reports. And AT&T calculated that that was costing workers 28,500 hours a year. Oh, wow. And so it eliminated that requirement and many like it, which they say is having a big difference uh, as far as efficiency and productivity. So whether it's the expense reports or counting shrimp or eliminating meetings, these really do add up to enormous blocks of time. Oh, yeah. So how have employees responded? Ha has morale improved? Anecdotally, they've responded very well to it. The baggage handlers are saying that life has significantly improved. Again, the power of ice cream. The power of ice cream, exactly. At AT&T, we've heard from some workers that, you know, taking out those daily annoyances, the amount of time spent on mundane, annoying tasks has really, really improved their lives. So generally, it's been well received. That's Wall Street Journal reporter Russell Adams. And that's your Money Briefing. I'm J.R. Whalen for The Wall Street Journal.